A year ago, we surely pledged our love to each other. I decided in my heart to live with this kind-hearted man. However, his attitude completely changed right after the marriage. The loving man he used to be is long gone. My husband no longer sees me as a woman. Now I'm treated just like a housekeeper. All you need to do is listen to me and stay quiet. That's his catchphrase. I wonder how long this life will continue. At that time, I had no way of knowing that a ray of light would shine on me. My name is Michelle Jenkins. I'm 28. I work as a secretary at my father's company while also being a housewife. The company, once managed by my grandfather, was taken over by my father two years ago. Being the daughter of a business owner, I've always been kept at a distance. The men who approached me are mostly after money. Of course, I've never really been in love. At one point, I stopped telling people about my family background. That's when I met the man who would become my husband, a man named David. I had asked my friend who introduced us to keep my status as the boss's daughter a secret. David doesn't gamble or smoke at all. He does drink, but never to excess. He was my ideal man. He would tell me he loved me and that he adored me. I thought I could spend the rest of my life with such a man. However, when I decided to marry David, my father said this, Michelle, it's fine if you marry him, but could you keep it a secret that you're the boss's daughter? Dad, how many times have I told you? He's a very good person. He's not after money at all. That may be true, but I don't want you to have a hard time because of that. But if a year passes after you're married and David is still the same, Let's talk about the company together. You can apologize for keeping it a secret then. All right, if you're that insistent, Dad, I'll do as you suggest. I agreed reluctantly with my father's proposition. My father knew of my past heartaches with gold-digging men, and as an overprotective parent, he worried I might get hurt again. I decided I could share the truth with David after a year, as per my father's advice. And until then, I would just be an ordinary secretary. And so, under these circumstances, David and I got married. Now, a year after our wedding, I still haven't revealed the truth to him. The reason is simple. He is no longer the kind man he used to be. As soon as we got married, his behavior became cold and distant. He would come home from work already in a foul mood and begin to nitpick at the dinners I prepared. Hamburgers for dinner again? We're not children. Can't you think of anything else? But David, you used to love my burgers, didn't you? I've made them countless times before. Don't talk back. You're always short on dishes. Besides the easy dishes like salad and soup, you should be able to make at least five other dishes. Five dishes? That's a lot. I have work too, you know. I can't manage that much. When I tell you to do something, you do it. I married you, so you should listen to what I say. I'm sorry. The warmth and kindness he used to show were gone, replaced by a coldness as harsh as ice. At the time, I only thought he must have had a bad day, but his behavior started to get worse. By the time half a year of our marriage had passed, David had become a full-fledged tyrant. Not just about the cooking, he would complain about everything from the way I folded the laundry to how I cleaned the house. If I tried to protest even a bit, he would yell at me with a terrifying look on his face. Just being yelled at would have been bearable, but sometimes he would even throw the meals I made into the trash. A year after our wedding, his tyrannical behavior hasn't changed, and if anything, it's getting worse. Just the other day, I was delayed at work and didn't get home until after 7 p.m. As soon as I said I'm home, he started yelling, You're late. What time do you think it is? Uh, I'm sorry. Work just got a bit out of hand. I'll start on dinner right away. Work got out of hand? A mere secretary like you doesn't have that much work to warrant staying late, but I really did. I'm handling some accounting tasks too, so there's a lot to process don't talk back to me. It's unthinkable for a woman to come home later than her husband. Next time, if you come back later than me, you're quitting your job. That's not fair. From fear of David, I couldn't talk back. Looking back, I wonder if I should have left him sooner, but I was pushing against the worry of my parents. When I married, I couldn't reveal the truth. I didn't want to sadden my mom and dad, so I silently bore it all by myself. Then one day, at work during a break, my father called me into the reception room. I often went in and out of the reception room because I often assisted my father as a secretary. As I entered, my father was already inside. What's up, I asked. It's been a year since you got married to David, right? I think it's about time you told him the truth, as promised. Oh, um, yeah, we had that agreement. Is something wrong? You don't seem happy. Didn't you say that David wasn't after the money? Well, yes, but it's just right now. It's a bit... Being my troubled expression, my father smiled and tried to comfort me, 
patting my shoulder. Did you have a fight with David? Well, you're both young and newlywed. I guess it's inevitable. My wife and I also had our fair share of arguments back in the day. But look at us now, still happily together. I'm sure you'll be okay, Michelle. It's not exactly a fight. Don't worry, everything will be all right. I mean, every couple has their share of arguments, right? Well, I suppose you're right. Anything else bothering you? No, nothing really. I'm okay. But I guess I want to wait for things to settle down a bit before I talk to him. Huh. Well, don't let it get you down too much. A little marital spat is pretty common. It seemed my father thought we were just having a minor argument to avoid worrying my parents. I hadn't consulted them about my husband up until now. Because of this, my father seemed to believe things were going well between us. Well, you better make up with David soon, saying that my father left the room. Left alone in the room, I was choked with emotions I didn't know how to deal with. I had married David despite my parents' concerns. I absolutely couldn't tell my father about the deteriorating relationship between David and me. But sooner or later, I'd have to talk about it or risk arousing suspicion. To prevent my father from becoming suspicious, I had to maintain my relationship with my husband somehow, and if possible, I wanted to steer our relationship in a positive direction. That night, I came home on time to talk with David. Waiting for him to return, just as I finished making dinner, he came home. I immediately broached the subject with him. David, there's something I want to talk about. Huh, I'm tired, you know. It's important. Look, we're married, right? I want our relationship to be equal and enjoy our lives together every day. Equal? What are you talking about? There's no way you and I are equal. My husband grabbed my hair, yanking it up harshly. Ouch! I couldn't help but cry out, but he didn't let go. As if mocking my wincing face, he slowly opened his mouth. Listen well, I'm the one who did you the favor of marrying you. Be grateful that I deemed to marry a plain and useless woman like you. You did me the favor, David? Didn't you say you loved me? Don't make me laugh. I just pretended to like you because you seemed obedient and would be a handy housekeeper. That's not true. You just need to be quiet and listen to me, housekeeper. With these words, he yanked my hair towards his face. From that day on, I gave up hoping. There was no chance of us being equals and I didn't want to worry my parents, nor could I get a divorce. My appetite dwindled day by day and I ended up just living with my roommate, my husband. Then one day while living such a life, I woke up feeling completely exhausted. My head hurts and I feel a chill. When I took my temperature, it was a whopping 104 degrees Fahrenheit. I forced my aching body to sit up and called out to my husband. David, I'm sorry, I don't think I can make breakfast today. What, why not? I've got a fever of 104. I'm in so much pain. Can I just stay in bed for the day? At this, my husband let out a long sigh and yelled, slacking off chores because of a stupid fever. Get to work, you good for nothing, but please forgive me, I'm really sick, shut up. Stop making excuses, you're just a housemaid, don't you dare defy your master. Please, just for today. I'm begging you, I pleaded. He clicked his tongue loudly, swung the door open with a bang, and left the room. Next thing I knew, my hands were shaking and my body was trembling uncontrollably. I finally realized just how close to the edge I was being pushed. If I continue like this, I'll break down for real. Continuing to live like this, it'll drive me mad, body and soul. I need to do something, but what can I do? I wanna think of a way out, but my fever is making my head heavy and I can't think straight. Maybe it was because I'd been on edge for so long, but I fell back asleep. Several hours later, I was awakened by my husband's raging voice. Hey, didn't I tell you to wake up, you dumb woman, huh, David? Outside the window, it was already dark. My fever had gone down a lot, but my body was still heavy and a faint headache lingered. Despite my state, he vented his anger. I called you multiple times. What are you doing, sleeping? Called? I sent you a text saying I'm bringing my boss home. Prepare drinks and snacks, didn't I? Huh? Wait a minute, you knew I was sick today, right? And yet you brought your boss home? I invited him to continue drinking at home. My promotion depends on this. Get up and get things ready now. No, I can't. I'm still in my pajamas, and I'm not feeling well at all. Shut up. Just get out here now. As he yanked me by the arm and forced me to stand in the kitchen, my husband then hurried back to his boss, who was likely waiting at the entrance. Sorry to keep you waiting. Please, come on in. From the entrance, I could hear my husband speaking cheerily. Are you sure this is okay this late? I'm sure your wife wouldn't appreciate. That's what I've been saying. I don't have a wife, just a housemaid. Uh housemaid sort of like a main wife you could say but please don't mind 
As he said this, my husband led his boss into the living room. I was in my pajamas without any makeup, so I bowed my head in embarrassment. Nice to meet you. My husband is always telling me about you. I apologize for my appearance. Uh, I'm the section chief, Mr. Smith. I'm sorry for intruding so suddenly. Please don't mind me. I'll prepare something right away. As I returned to the kitchen, hiding my face, my husband let out a tirade. Hey, get a move on and make something. You're absolutely useless. Uh, I'm sorry. Just wait a little bit longer. Instead of opening your mouth, move your hands. Despite the section chief taking the time to visit, how much more do you need to embarrass yourself before you're satisfied? Huh, I'm sorry. Sorry about this, Mr. Smith. Our maid is really quite useless. The section chief sat quietly, his face slightly contorted. Even as I prepared and brought over the drinks and snacks, my husband kept making snide remarks like, you're really useless. When my husband went to the bathroom, Section Chief Smith started to speak. Excuse me, there was no way I could ignore him. Although I was flustered, I responded, Yes, is there something you need? You're, you're the daughter of CEO Allen, aren't you? I made a name? Was Allen. He was referring to CEO Allen, my father. What? How did you... I had previously visited your father's company regarding a business deal. You served me tea then, didn't you? Wait, you were from that time? I usually attended all interactions with our business partners. Each time I served tea and was introduced as the daughter of Mr. Allen, and Smith, he was one of those people. I was informed that David's workplace had become a client of my father's company, but I had not yet told my father that David was working at Smith's company. While glancing towards the bathroom, Smith continued in a hushed tone, What's up with your husband's behavior? Is he always like this at home? Uh, yes. I can't believe what you've been through. Why haven't you told Mr. Allen? Um, that is, regardless, we can't let this continue. Leave it to me. Smith, while looking at me straight in the eyes, quickly packed up his things and left. In that moment, I felt as if something that had been restraining me was slowly being untangled. I felt a profound relief, as if I had finally found an ally. On the other hand, when David returned from the bathroom, he was stunned to find that Smith had left. Why didn't you stop him, you good-for-nothing? Despite his shouting, I decided to trust in Smith's words and endure it. Several days later, I was summoned by my father and headed to the company's reception room. Upon entering, I found Smith and a pale-looking David. What? Why is David here? And Smith, you're here too? I was confused, unable to understand the situation. In the tense atmosphere, my father started speaking with a stern expression. I heard from Smith you've been treated horribly by David, haven't you? I, that is, I understand you're kind-hearted and you wanted to avoid worrying me, didn't you? Dad, thank you. Smith, thanks to you, I was able to save my daughter. At my father's words, Smith bowed his head. Immediately afterwards, my father shot a withering glare at the ash and faced David, coldly stating, David, I can't believe you turned out to be such a scumbag. I shouldn't have let you marry my daughter. Wait, please, David pleaded, shaking visibly. I had no idea you were the president of our business partner. I didn't know Michelle was a CEO's daughter. Shut up. So if you knew, you would have treated Michelle better? You're truly a lowlife. No, there's no reason for this. A reason? I'm going to report you to your company CEO. I'm acquainted with him, and we have a long-standing relationship. No way. David filled his eyes with tears and crumbled to his knees. Then he turned to me with pleading eyes. Michelle, say something to your father for me. You want me to say something, huh? I raised my voice to vent my pent-up frustrations. Do you have any idea how much I've suffered because of your overbearing, chauvinistic attitude? I've been holding it in all this time. I tried to improve our relationship. It's you who ruined everything, right? Treating me like a housemaid and constantly berating me. Do you know how humiliating that was? Wait, Michelle, please forgive me. Shut up. Don't you dare casually call me by my name. No matter how much you apologize, I will never forgive you. I don't care if you fall into hardship. You get what you deserve. If you understand, never show up in front of me again. Stay out of my life forever. At the end of my outburst, David started crying uncontrollably. Smith grabbed his arm, bowed, and left the reception room. Afterwards, Dave and I got divorced. When my father informed David's company's president about the incident, he lost his job as well. It seemed David had a poor attitude at work and was fired. Considering these factors, because he was fired for a valid reason, he didn't get any severance pay. After the divorce, David apparently went back to his parents' house. 
However, his in-laws already knew about the incident. I heard his father gave him a stern scolding and kicked him out of the house. Now he seems to be working day and night at a factory where he can live in. He probably doesn't have much of a cushion since he has to make alimony payments to me. On the other hand, after the divorce, I moved back to my parents' house. Now I've completely recovered and am focusing on my job. Since then, I've been meeting Smith regularly, and we have a good relationship. I'm not considering remarrying yet, but if I do someday, I want someone like him. When that time comes, I hope to build a happy family.